Okay, we are back at it with chapter four. So we are in lesson 4.1. We're gonna be uh, doing this in two videos. First one is just we're gonna talk about some terms that you need to know for triangles and what we would call triangle properties. And then the second one, we're gonna look at a couple theorems. All right, so first thing you need to know how to do is to name a triangle. Now you should obviously know, I hope you know this, but a triangle is a polygon with three sides. We talked about that in an earlier lesson. All right, so three sides, remember polygons have to be straight. Um, they can't have gaps in them. They can't overlap the sides. The sides cannot intersect anywhere other than their endpoints. So we got a triangle, something like this. You could have a triangle that looks something like this. Okay, you got other possibilities. So let's say I have three letters here, capital letters because they're points, or maybe over on this one I have these three letters. Okay, to name a triangle, you use the triangle symbol, which just looks like that. And then you write your three letters, and you can write them in any order. So I could call this triangle ABC. Or I could call it, call it triangle CAB. Okay, this one over here, even though the triangle is shaped differently, we still use this exact same symbol for any triangle. We don't change the symbol just because the triangle looks a little bit different. So this could be PQR triangle PQR, it could be triangle QRP, the order doesn't really matter, you can go PQR this way, you can work backwards this way, you could start here and work backwards, start here and work forward, it really doesn't matter. As long as you do all three letters, um, you're fine, okay, so it's naming a triangle. Okay, next, classifying a triangle, we can do that two different ways, we can do it by its sides, or we can do it by its angles. So these are some terms that you probably already know. Okay, but good to review, just and just in case you don't know one of them, um, that will be something you learn. So, a couple possibilities. By sides, we could have scalene. We could have isosceles. Or we could have equilateral. Okay, scalene, isosceles, and equilateral. Right, so, any of those are acceptable for side names. All right, so let's talk about what each, what each of them means. So scalene. Scalene means no congruent sides. Okay, no congruent sides. Isosceles has at least two congruent sides. Okay, which means it could have three. All right, it's a possibility, but usually we just talk about having two. And then equilateral is all sides are congruent. Now in a triangle that means all three sides, but in a quadrilateral we could have an equilateral quadrilateral and it would have all four sides congruent and so on. Okay, now by angles, right, you can have an acute triangle, you can have a right triangle, you can have an obtuse triangle, and you can have equiangular. All right. Acute, right, obtuse, and equiangular. Let me zoom in on that a little bit so you can make sure you get your spelling right. Okay, an acute triangle. All three angles are acute. Okay, all three angles are acute. Remember, acute means less than 90 degrees. Okay, a right triangle. It doesn't have three right angles. Okay, an acute triangle has three acute angles. A right triangle has one right angle. And if you want to put a little note, the other two are still acute. Okay. An obtuse triangle. Just like a right triangle, it's not going to be all three obtuse angles. It's actually impossible to draw in planar geometry. You might be able to do something a little bit different if you get into spherical geometry. But in planar geometry, you can only have one obtuse angle, which means the other two are still acute. And then finally, equiangular. All angles are congruent. Now we can kind of mix these up 
or I shouldn't say mix them up, but um, mix and match is probably a better way to say it. So let me, let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say I have this kind of triangle. Okay. And let's say that I put this little symbol right here. And then these all get different marks. All right, so what kind of triangle would this be? Well, we know from this that it's a right triangle. And since none of the sides are congruent, it would be scalene. So this is a right scalene triangle. Okay, so we can do that. All right. Um, what if we have something like this? Okay. Remember when you have the same marks here, it means those are congruent. Okay, so what do we have if we got two congruent sides? This is isosceles. All of the angles are less than 90. We're kind of going by looks to see that. All right, later on we'll do a little more detailed stuff. Let me know some algebra. So this would be an acute isosceles triangle. All right. Now what if we had something like this? Okay, so all those angles are congruent. Now later on we're going to learn why. But if all the angles are congruent, all the sides have to be congruent as well. So this one would be equilateral. It would be equiangular. It would also be isosceles. Remember, isosceles just means two or more congruent sides. This definitely has two or more. It's also acute. All three angles are acute angles. Okay, so this one would be all four. Now, there are some things you cannot do. You cannot draw an obtuse equilateral triangle. Okay? It's impossible to do in flat surface geometry, all right? in planar geometry. Um, so there are a few combinations. But most of them you can do. You know, most of them you can do. All right? So you need to be able to either draw what I tell you or if just look at a drawing and then identify what it is. All right? Got a couple more terms. Okay, interior angles. So if I have a triangle, it's got three interior angles. Ignore this little extra piece out here, sorry. Just hide that off the side. All right, this is an interior angle. This is an interior angle. And this is an interior angle. I have them marked differently because we don't know if they're congruent or not. But those are interior angles. They're angles inside your polygon, and they're located at each vertex of the polygon. Okay, now an exterior angle. This one can get a little more confusing. It is not, let me show you what's not on this other sheet of paper real quick. Okay, so it is not this. Okay, remember an interior angle is this little piece. An exterior angle is not all of this. Okay, that is not an exterior angle. Okay. Remember, we talked about this earlier in the year, but in, in our geometry class, we are not going to talk about angles that are more than 180 degrees. This angle is definitely more than 180 degrees, so we're not going to be discussing it. You will talk about that in some other classes, especially class like pre-calculus. Okay. So what is an exterior angle then? An exterior angle, by definition, forms a linear pair with an interior angle. An exterior angle forms a linear pair with an interior angle. All right, so if we look at this over here, let's just go to this one. So this interior angle right here, well, that's interior. Okay, now if I extend this line out, this, and it's going to be a different measurement, so I'll put two marks. That is my exterior angle right there. Now, you could actually extend this line out instead. And you do this for my exterior angle. But the cool thing is it doesn't matter which one I pick because these two angles are exactly the same. Does anyone remember why those two angles have to have the exact same measure? You guys remember your vertical angle theorem? Okay, so they have the same exact measure by the vertical angle theorem. So exterior angle, it can be this one or it can be this one. Now, the thing is we only pick one at each corner. So if you pick that one, don't pick this one. If you pick this one, 
just don't pick that one. Don't pick both exterior angles at the same corner at the same time. All right, just pick one of them. Does not matter which one you pick because they're going to have the same measure anyways. All right. That's uh, pretty much it for our terms. Okay, so the terms aren't real difficult. Okay, so make sure you uh, take good notes, rewind it, watch it again if you missed any of those terms, and then we're going to hit some theorems in our second video.